CVs. So it says, what is the factored form of 9x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 18x squared minus 12x? So first of all, factored form. There's a lot of different types of factoring. We factor things in different ways. First of all, the first thing you need to notice, isn't there four terms? There's four terms here. That's the first thing you should notice. Okay, it says factor, and there's four terms. Anytime there's four terms and it says factor, you're going to factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms, and then we group the last two terms. Could you simplify that? No. Could you can simplify? You can't combine any like terms here. There's no like terms here. Um, I guess what you're saying is they all divide by three. Yeah. So yeah, that's one way of doing it. We could do that too. So either way, we're going to get the same answer. I'm going to keep going with this, and then I'll show you where that three comes into play. In fact, okay, so yes, there is a three in common. We could have factored out that and then continued. But what I'm going to do is say, okay, I'm factoring by grouping here. Um, and Mason wouldn't be wrong. That would have been a great way to continue. But then you would have, would have had to keep going by grouping. Okay, so now we're going to factor out the greatest common factor in this group. What's the greatest common factor in this group? 3x cubed. 3x cubed. Okay, so we pull out 3x cubed. Now I'm going to write what's left in each term. So I put my parentheses. We pulled out 3x cubed from each term in this first section here. 9 divided by 3 is 3, right? And then x to the fourth divided by x cubed is x. Is everybody comfortable with that? And then minus 6, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we have minus 2, and then x cubed divided by x cubed is 1. Is everybody comfortable with that? Now we're going to factor this group. What's the greatest common factor in this group? 6x. You know, 6x. Okay. 6x. So then we're going to say, okay, so we divide each term by 6x. So then left is 18 divided by 6 is 3. x squared divided by x is x, right? Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. x divided by x is 1. Is our safe haven the same? Yeah, so we factor that out. Pull out the safe haven. So we pull out 3x three, yeah, three minus 2. When we pull out 3x minus 2, is because this term had a 3x minus 2, and this term, because this is really a positive 6x, this term had a 3x minus 2. So we factored it out. So then dividing it out of each term to see what's left would be 3x cubed, right, plus 6x. Now you have to ask yourself, is it factored completely right here? So let's look at this group. Anything more in common? No. We're good? Let's look at this group. Anything more in common? A 3 and an x, right? So let's pull out a 3x, and then left would be, divide by 3x, so then left would be x squared, people? Yeah. Plus 2. Okay. So now our final answer would be, we'll write it, I mean, this is all being multiplied, so this became this. I should put that 3x in front, then we have our x squared plus 2, and then we have our 3x minus 2. That is the factor completely form. So Mason, if we would have factored out 3x from the beginning, that would have been a great idea, because there was a 3x in common, right? And then if we would have continued to factor by grouping, we would end up at this point. Good. Yeah, so there's a couple different ways to do it. Questions on that? So guys, understand factored form means it's equal, but in factored form. Um, so if I multiply all this back together, we would end up back up here. You guys want to shout out, right? Factoring is just the opposite of multiplication. Okay, sweet. Next problem. So this one, it says, what is the factored form of 9x cubed plus 24x squared plus 12x? So write that down, and I'm going to fix my roll real quick, and then we'll do it. So it says, what is the factored form? So I want you to notice something. One, two, three terms. Is that four terms? No, we don't factor by grouping. Okay, so you say to yourself, is it quadratic right here? No, so you do not do what multiplies to be a times c as a 3b. That's a quadratic thing, not right here. So we say, okay, then what do we do? Well, if there's three terms and it's not quadratic, then there must be something in common. Factor out the greatest common factor. What does each term have in common? 3 and 3x. So let's write what's left in each term after we divide it out of 3x. That's what factoring does. You pull out 3x. 
Make sure you write it though. People will say, oh, I just divide everything by 3x and they never write 3x. No, it doesn't disappear into thin air, it's right there. You factored it out. So then left in the first term is 3x squared, right, people? And then plus 8x and then plus 4. Okay, good. So now we look at it and say, is it factored completely? Yes, this piece is. Is this piece factored completely? It may or may not be. It just depends. Does it factor? Well, let's see. Do we know how to factor a quadratic? Yes. So this is what we do. What multiplies to be 8 times 2, what multiplies to be 3 times 4, which is 7, which it blows my mind that we still have people that can't factor in here. You shouldn't have even got through secondary 2 if you can factor. Okay, well, hey, yeah. What multiplies to be 12, What is going on? Just a Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're doing what multiplies to be 8 times C, which we're not adding, we're multiplying, so that would be 12, and that adds up to be 8. Signs, positives, right? 6 times 2, correct? Yes. Positive 6, positive 2. So are those are our factors. Can we quick factor this one? No, and some of you did it on the quiz we just took. Our a value is not a 1, it's not a positive 1. So we drop the n terms down, drop. So we drop down 3x squared. We drop down positive 4. Then we're breaking down the middle term, rewriting 8x as 6x and 2x. Order doesn't matter. So plus 6x plus 2x. Now look, isn't this four terms? This is why we factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms, the second two terms. What's the greatest common factor in this term? We're ignoring the 3x for a minute. What's the greatest common factor? 3x, you're right. So then left is x plus 2, right? What's in common here? Positive 2, right? Divide each term by 2. Left is x plus 2. Our state payment's good. So we factor out x plus 2. Left was 3x plus 2. Are we all comfortable? Yes. Now we cannot forget that originally we factored out a 3x, so that isn't our answer. 3x. There's our final answer. None of it factors even further. Questions? Okay. Sweet. We're all comfortable? Okay, next one. Okay, it says, what are the zeros of the function? What are the zeros of the function? Write it down. Zeros mean, where does it cross the x-axis, right? Everybody? Isn't that what a zero is? Doesn't that mean, what is the solution? Yes, okay, zeros are where it's crossing the x-axis. Now look at it. Aren't these in linear factor form? Aren't these factors? Because isn't this 2x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 1? Now, the best way to solve anything or to find the x-intercept, which is solving, is to have it factored. Isn't this one already factored? Once we factor it, which is already factored, you set linear factors equal to 0 and solve. So we'll set 2x plus 3 equal to 0. We'll set x minus 1 equal to 0, x minus 1 equal to 0. Now, solving for x would be finding the zeros. So let's just algebraically solve this one. When do we subtract 3? 2x is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by 2. One of our solutions is x is equal to negative 3 halves. Guys, it's crossing the axis at negative 1.5, which is negative 3 halves. Sweet. Then we add 1. x is equal to 1. And we add 1. x is equal to 1. So don't we have x is equal to 1, and what's the multiplicity? Uh, 2, right? Doesn't that mean it happens twice? Yes. Which means it's going to bounce on that x value, guys. That means it bounces. Anytime you see it bounce, it counts for two of them, but it only happens, I mean, it touches down and bounces back up on the x-axis. So we say x equals 1 with a multiplicity of 2, because it happens twice. Questions? Okay, next problem. Write it down. This one 
should be pretty easy for us, but it's kind of hard for a lot of people. So it says, what is the polynomial in standard form with the given roots? Our roots x-intercepts. There were what's the solutions? So guys, if these are the solutions, are we going to work backwards to find the polynomial? Just like here, we were given the polynomial and we worked forward to find the solutions. So we're taking the solutions and working backwards. So if we have x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 0, we want to know, okay, if x equals negative 2, what was the linear factor that gave us x equals negative 2? <laughs> Wasn't it set equal to 0 before we got the 2? So we add 2 to both sides to get it over to the other side. So x plus 2 is equal to 0, must have been the linear factor if x equals negative 2, right? Does it make sense? So then right here, if x equals 1, then x minus 1 must have been the linear factor that gave us that solution. And then x equals 0. So x equals to 0 is x equal to 0. So now before we set them each individually equal to 0, they were together being multiplied and equal to 0. The zero product property rule allowed us to split them apart, but they were together being multiplied first, right? So now let's distribute because it says what's a polynomial in standard form. So if this is in backward form, let's put it in standard form. Take my suggestion. If you have a binomial and a binomial, multiply those together first. I promise it'll be less room for error. x times x is x squared minus x plus 2x minus 2. We'll combine like terms, x squared. Negative x plus 2x is plus x minus 2. So that was this in standard form, but now we have to multiply in x, right? So all of that stuff. So we put our x in, that's x cubed, plus x squared, minus 2x, and that's equal to 0. Sweet. So our polynomial in standard form is x. Highest degree to lowest degree means standard form and set equal to zero. Questions? Okay, a couple more on this lock review for those stage review problems for today. A couple more. You'll need them, I promise. What is the polynomial in standard form with these given roots? So we have x is equal to 2i and x is equal to negative 1. Now I want you to think back to the conjugate root theorem. The conjugate, now everybody listen very carefully. This is a theorem we learned, it was more at the beginning of the year. The conjugate root theorem says, if you have an imaginary root or an irrational root, irrational means cannot be written as a fraction. Only if you have an imaginary root or an irrational root, then its conjugate has to be a root. Its conjugate has to be a root. Conjugate means change of sign in between, right? So if x equals 2i, is that an imaginary solution? So its conjugate root, x equals negative 2i, must also be a root. Even though it wasn't given, they expect you to know that. So that's also a root. They come in conjugate pairs. You can't just have a 2i. Think about the quadratic formula. When we get an answer of 2i, when we have a plus and minus 2i. Okay. Awesome. And then we have x equal to negative 1. Now people started doing... Oh, so 1 is the solution. Is that an imaginary solution? Can, is, can that be written as a fraction? Yep. Yes, 1 is a number, right? That's a fraction technically. So will its conjugate be a root? Not necessarily. Does everybody understand that? So what degree will this be? There are three roots, and it's degree 3. Okay, so let's go through this. So before we got 2i, it was set equal to 0. So we have x, we subtract 2i from both sides. So we have x minus 2i is equal to 0. Right here, we'll add 2i to both sides. So we also have x plus 2i equals 0. Is everybody comfortable? And then we'll add 1. x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, before they were individually set equal to 0, they were being multiplied. And then they were set equal to 0. Now take my advice. If you have a conjugate pair, multiply those together first because the middle terms always cancel out. 
So just multiply those together first. So I'm going to multiply those two together. Let's distribute x times x is x squared, right? x times 2i is positive 2i x's. Negative 2i times x is negative 2i x's. Now here's where I guarantee like 90% of you will mess it up, so don't. Negative 2i times positive 2i is good. Negative 4i squared. i times i is i squared. Let's combine like terms. x squared. And then those middle terms cancel out. That happens with conjugate pairs. And then we have minus 4 times i squared. Recall, i squared is equal to negative 1. They are literally equal. So isn't this negative 4 times i squared? So isn't that negative 4 times negative 1? Which is positive 4, right? x squared plus 4. Which makes sense. If we set that equal to 0 and solve, we get plus or minus 2x, right? Okay. So we have x squared plus 4. We can't forget to multiply that to x plus 1. So we're getting there. We'll distribute. That's x cubed plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. And voila, it's in standard form and done. So if I said solve and we were here, isn't there four terms? So when we factor by grouping, then we get our factors and we set those equal to zero and solve, right? And we'd end up with those solutions up there. Do you all understand that? They go hand in hand. Okay. Sweet. Okay, this one's quick. So don't write this one down. It says, how many total roots does the polynomial have? If x equals 2, x equals i, and x equals negative square root of 3. These are the known roots. What are the other roots? So figure, let's figure out the other roots first of all. So if x equals 2, is it conjugate a root? No, right? That's a number that can be written as a fraction. x equals i, is it conjugate a root? So x also equals negative i, correct? It has to. They have to come. Imaginary numbers come in conjugate pairs. Then we have x is equal to negative square root of 3. Is that, can that be written as a fraction? If you don't know, type it into your calculator, hit math, enter, enter. If it gives you the same decimal and it won't change it to a fraction, it's irrational. Is that an irrational root? Yes. So isn't it conjugate also a root? Okay, awesome. So this will be degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Degree 5. Questions on that? Sorry, there really is so much to review today, but it's been a while, and I don't want to throw you to the packet without any review. So it says, is x plus 2 a factor of x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x? So is x plus 2, this, is this a factor of this? So first of all, um, I'm going to do this one by synthetic division. So remember, if you have a root, you can do synthetic division. And if you do synthetic division and you get a remainder of zero, wasn't that for sure a root? Yes, so that's how I'm going to do it. Because you guys do need to remember synthetic division. So it says x plus 2 is a factor. Well, then what's the root? So if x plus 2 was equal to zero and that was a linear factor, then x equals negative 2, right? So we're going to use that to do synthetic division. So you set up negative 2 on the outside. You draw your little box. And then you write in the coefficients. Now here is the catch. Remember this, or else you will get it wrong on your packet today. It has to have every degree. So isn't this 1x to the 4th plus 2x cubed? We're not missing 4, 3, 2, 1, but we are missing the constant, right? So we have a 1 here. If you're missing anything in between, as in, like, let's say 2x cubed wasn't there, you have to put a 0 in. So we have 1, 2, the coefficient in front of this is negative 1, right? Guys, are we following? Yes. And then negative 2, and then 0, right? There's plus 0. We have to put it in from the highest degree to lowest degree. There's, you could have a bunch of zeros in here. So then you drop down this first number here always. Then you multiply up. 1 times negative 2 is 
Negative 2, and then you add straight down, right? So we add straight down and get 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Then you add straight down. Is everybody good? Negative 1 times negative 2. 2, add straight down, 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Add straight down, 0. So then you go backwards. This is our remainder, so this must be our constant x, x squared, x cubed. Which makes sense, guys. It started at degree 4, we divided, and now it's degree 3. Right, everybody? Was our remainder 0? Yes, so thus, this is a factor. If your remainder is not 0, it's not a factor. Yes? And see if it comes out to be zero. Yes, I did it this way because I didn't want to have to do another problem doing synthetic division. Yeah, so good point. We could have just plugged in because um, wouldn't it be zero? So this is equal to zero, right? So if you plug in negative two in and it comes out to be zero, yes. I just wanted to review synthetic division because you will have to do that today. Questions? Okay, these are the pages you're doing today. 21 to 25. 